Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Stephen Allen, yes, we are back with another Batman 66 episode review, and today, we'll be reviewing the episode, The Zodiac Crimes, and we, and this is a very special one, because not only is another villain team up, but this is the beginning of the series' first ever three-parter, so without further ado, let's get into the review. We'll begin our episode at, at, police, at police Commissioner Gordon's office at GCPD, where we find that, uh, that he and Chief O'Hara have come up with a new um, crime program to uh, to essentially, you know, help them putting most of the criminals behind bars. But it, and the thing is called a rare art map. It basically has all the valuable items on it. But but before they could finish, the Joker appears. He turns out he. It turns out he is back and he's going to commit what he's called the Zodiac Crimes, and he's just getting started. He tells him to look for 11 more and don't forget to keep score, saying, and he quickly makes his escape on a helicopter with the help of his female assistant known as Venus. Just as they make their escape, Commissioner Gordon and Chief Ahara quickly phone up, well, Wayne Manor. Well, they don't know that's Wayne Manor, they think they're phoning Batman, but what they do and we get this fun little scene with Dick playing, I think it's the Trum horn, not exactly sure what it is, but we get a nice little funny scene, a moment with that. But they do answer the bat phone, slide down the bat poles, and we get to the opening credit. credits. But here we get something interesting. Even though it says that the Joker is the main villain, he'll be teaming up with an extra special guest villain, and that will be the Penguin. We then go to Police Commissioner Gordon's office, where they are informed of everything, they search the area and find the place bugged and quickly get it to stop. They then realize that what he's planning to do is steal stuff related to the Zo to the Zodiac. We then cut back to the Joker at his hideout and is teaming up with a fellow new villain that he has personally smuggled into Gotham and that of course is the Penguin and he plans to team up with him to essentially help take down to help take down Batman and Robin and help him with his Zodiac crimes. Just as Batman, Robin, Commissioner Gordon, and Chief O'Hara are searching through the art map to find out a possible, all the possible targets the Joker will be wanting. They get a phone call, which happens to be from Joker, telling, the, essentially giving them a clue to his next crime. Uh, to his next crime, Batman and Robin manage to deduce that what they think the Joker plans to plans to kidnap the two musicians in Gotham City who are known as the Twins. Just as that happened, we cut back to the Joker's, the Joker's hideout again, where he and the Penguin reveal that what they've actually done is lead Batman on a false trail. While he and Venus, while he plans to go and rob their real target, the Penguin is essentially meant to be a distraction for them. We then cut to Batman and Robin at the recording studio where these twins are, where it's essentially the jo two of the Joker's well crew dressed up in disguise. And just as they're telling them to quickly get out, the Penguin appears and essentially. A fight, a chase breaks out. Not a fight, a chase. But the Penguin manages to make his escape. But Batman does manage to steal Venus's wig. Just as that's happening, we find the Joker and Venus are at some jewelry store where they make their robbery by stealing the two diamond jewels. Batman and Robin are back at the Batcave and are essentially analyzing Venus's wig to find a possible location. They do and crash the sensual hider that she's hiding in. And try to convince her to tell us where to tell them where Joker and Penguin are, only to get a phone call from the Joker, telling that he plans to steal steal a lion and a crab. Realize that Venus somehow has turned over a new leaf, and they go to this opera performance where the Penguin, the Joker, and all the men turn up. And we get a very funny bat fight. As they're fighting, it's like a musical opera ha having. It's really fun. I absolutely enjoy it. However. The Joker and his crew manage to make their escape with Leo Crustacean. Leo the Lion and Crustacean the Crab, two things from the Zodiac. But the Penguin is quickly apprehended. Well, that was quick. But despite that, they know they realize that the Joker's possible next target will be someone on the Zodiac. So they so they wait at the museum where this famous statue that they know that he plans to steal will be there. Just as that's happening, they're in the museum waiting for the Joker. Only for the Joker and only one of his men to show up, Robin mistaking it'll be an even fight, two against two. Joker reveals it's not, and he says, With two, you'll discover seven, about to give you a free trip to heaven, and a bat fight breaks out. Another very well choreographed episode. 
And as we go, and as we go, Batman and Robin win the fight, only to be essentially knocked out by Venus, who is was really the statue that they planned to so-called steal, and essentially they are knocked out. They are then tied down to this. Well, I'm not really sure what you call it, but the dynamic duo are tied down, and there's this meteor on top of them. A place of dynamite is placed in one of the many, many fake planets, and essentially is to burn the ropes. Once the ropes burn, the meteor will come crashing down on them, essentially squashing them to death. And that's where we end our cliffhanger. Everything so far is really good so far. Batman and Robin are fun as always. Commissioner Gordon Shiva Hara, though... I still this bumbling silly people, you know, that they are pretty much incompetent police, they're still fun as always, even with the little moments we have with Alfred and Harriet are all fun. Now I have mentioned in the Mad Hatter two parter and even the Sam Man and Catwoman two parter, I feel like everyone is getting stale and too repetitive. And that's kind of the same here. But I feel like there's a different energy now, and that's probably because we're getting something new this time around. Because A, we're having a villain team up. And of course but like with most team-ups, there's the real main villain who's really leading the charge, while the other one is kind of being the second player. And who is that? And who am I referring to? Well, let's look at the villain, shall we? Caesar Romero is back as Joker. Oh my god. It's, it's, it's not like it's been a long time since we saw him, but it's great that he's back, and the energy that he still has with the Joker character is still fun as always. It didn't... Now, I like how he's just kind of making it up as he goes... I think that with this crime he's doing is for his own amusement, and for something like the Zodiac would appeal to his interest. Even though it has nothing to do with clowns, it's something that is essentially silly and just damn crazy. Of course, it will be straight up Joker's Alley. He's really calling the shots and is really running the whole operation here. And the bit where he had the audacity to essentially being, you know, to go to Gotham. City's police department and steal a, a rare art match, R-A-M, Aries the Ram, for me is something that is so Joker. Despite the fact it's not the more modern dark take, this lighthearted Joker still shares a lot of similarities with his more darker counterpart. And of course another thing I like is who they've teamed him up with. Arguably after the Joker, for many people the Penguin was considered the Batman's second greatest villains in comics. In the TV show, many people always thought that the Riddler was the better, vi was arguably the best villain on the show and the most popular. Now, in the movie, it was clear the Penguin was really running the show, whilst whilst the Joker kind of either played to number two or was too much of a wild card. Here, it's reversed. Now, granted, the Penguin doesn't get much screen time in this two-parter. But I like that despite that, he still at least plays to some contribute to the plot. Now granted, he's not going to play much of a role in this episode, nor the one will be proceeding. And he won't honestly back until the third part, but despite that, it's still, these t Burgess Meredith and Cesar Romero, somehow their acting and chemistry, how they play off each other, really works here. And I, and I believe that it was a good choice for the Penguin do the Joker's team up with the Penguin, which is very common in nearly every story now for the Penguin and the Joker to somehow team up. The Zodiac Crimes for me is so far is a really good start to this to this story. And I really want to see where we go and what more can we expect from the show going forward. Overall, I really feel that this has a different feeling, but that's because they are really pulling out all the stops for this. This is not gonna be an average two adventure, like I said at the beginning of the video. We are experiencing the show's ever first three-parter, something that is completely different, and I'm fully, fully excited to see where more we go. And so far, it's been a good start. I can't really f find any faults with this. Maybe, I guess I could really say is Venus. I find her so eye-rolling, but despite that, I enjoy this to the fullest, and I think anyone else would. There we have it, that was the Zodiac Crime. So far, a good ep good episode to this ambitious first ever series three-parter. Join us next time with the Joker's Hard Times. Hopefully that is the name of the episode. Anyway, tune in next time for the same Stephen Hour and the same Stephen Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, so long for now.